just to do that. Okay, so good evening, everybody, and welcome to our virtual open evening for animal and equine. I'm Corinne Piskin, I'm principal at City College Norwich, which includes Eastern College, which is where the provision that we'll be talking about this evening is. Um, I'm going to hand you over in a moment to my colleagues, but first of all, just a reminder, if you didn't hear when you came in, we've got the Q&A function open at the bottom of the screen and any questions that you've got, pop them in there and then I will pose those questions to my colleagues as we go through the presentation. So I'll hand over first of all to Paula. So good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Paula Ottaway and I am the director of the land based industries here at Eastern College. Um, so I look after agriculture, horticulture, land and wildlife, but also as part of the area, I look after the animal and equine area. Um, and the head of that area is Chris, who will be taking you through the presentation. So I will hand over to him. Perfect. Thanks, Porter. Uh, so yeah, I'm Chris Sturdy, Head of Animal and Equine. Uh, so working uh, with Paula, uh, supporting the curriculum uh, area of, of the, the Animal and Equine Department, working with our students and uh, lecturers to, to give our students the, the, the best experience possible uh, whilst they're here at Eastern College. And this evening, uh, what we'll be doing is going through a presentation uh, to give you a bit of an insight into uh, the Animal and Equine curriculum area. Uh, give you a bit of a taster uh, um, about what facilities we, we've got and uh, and then an opportunity at the end as Corianne said to, to do some uh, questions and answers so um, what I will do is just share my screen so that we can pop that um, presentation up okay so Oh, hopefully you can all now see that um, perfect uh, Okay, so let's go through this then. Uh, perfect. So um, just, you know, I am working across two screens. So if I look like I'm, I'm not staring directly, the presentation is actually um, on, on my right hand side. So I'll, I'll kind of look at that, but I will come back to the camera. Uh, so um, as you can see there, purpose of uh, today's session, and say it's give you a bit of an insight into the animal and equine uh, area and a bit about what college life is uh, about as well. Uh, and then move on to that Q and A session um, towards the end. Uh, so, it's the first question, uh, why, why Eastern College? Uh, why would you want to come and study animal and equine with us here? Uh, when we look at our, our staff, when we, we look at those that, that will be teaching um, our, our future students, uh, they, we've got a, a really nice range of staff throughout the department that have got some really good professional experiences that has spent many years working in industry. Uh, if we look at the, uh, the animal department, uh, we've got those that have worked within uh, zoos, we've got those who have worked within um, research and lab facilities, uh, those that have uh, worked out in, in wildlife, working for organisations like the, the National Trust, uh, forest schools and, and kind of working in wildlife and ecology, um, outdoor teaching, um, uh, environments. Uh, myself, I, I've got 10 years uh, worth of experience coming from the, the zoological sector. Uh, previous to, to coming to Eastern College, I uh, was the curator of the Sea Life Centre in, in Great Yarmouth. Uh, so we've got lots of experiences uh, that we can bring uh, to our students where um, we can not just teach the curriculum, but actually give a, a real insight into to how the industry um, functions to give you those insider tips and to, to give you those um, advantages or, or an insight uh, but some knowledge to, to get that career to get that job uh, within um, those sectors when we look at our equine side as well uh, our staff have um, got uh, British Horse Society trainings the BHS uh, going through the, the different stages uh, working up to, to their instructor levels as well uh, so not only can you have the confidence that uh, the the lecturers have got the uh, the qualification side on the academic side, their degrees, et cetera, but they've also got that professional industry training uh, to, to support you with your studies. 
when we look at the facilities, uh, when we look at our equestrian yard, uh, we are a BHS uh, approved centre and not uh, are we only just uh, approved, but we're actually a highly commended as well. Uh, so you know that we are, are reaching those real high standards when it comes to um, the, the care of our horses, but also the level of instruction uh, that you'd be getting uh, as well. Um, to reach the, that highly commended uh, status, we, we have to go above and beyond um, the, the sort of general guidance so you, you really know that from a facilities perspective uh, you're, you're getting a, a really good standard. Uh, similar with our, our animal care centre as well uh, that we're, we're always always aiming to, to meet those industry standards. Uh, the, the technicians that, that run the centre have, have got previous positions uh, working in zoos, management in zoos, uh, management in um, farm parks as well uh, so that they're bringing those experiences and the, those standards uh, with them uh, and implementing that here at the college. Uh, and not only when we just look at the the sort of the department when we look at the college environment as a whole uh, this campus is a really nice open campus there's lots of green spaces um, to work there if you're interested in the equestrian side uh, there, there's opportunities to go out hacking uh, as well as the sort of indoor arena and, and the outdoor arena that we've got uh, but the, the state also supports the animal care side as well so we're, when we're looking at uh, wildlife uh, walks when we're looking at doing um, surveys uh, we've, we've got opportunity to stay on site, on site in the estate to go out to um, to our water meadows uh, and to our woodlands uh, and all the, the the different habitats that we study here at uh, the college. Uh, and everything is really set up to, to start giving you that that independence to start building up your um, your your career, giving you those steps not just from the curriculum perspective but also um, to, to help guide you into to being ready to work um, and, to, and to give you that independence. So a, a great support network here uh, at, at the college. Uh, and that kind of links into to the next side. So life at the college, uh, we've got our, our mission statement, challenging minds, uh, inspiring success and securing futures. Uh, so you know, you, when you come here, uh, you'll, you'll be challenged you know, in the sense of you know, your, your viewpoints, discussion points. Um, we want to make sure that you're really getting the, the best out of, of both your, your academic abilities, but also your practical abilities as well. Uh, so again, if you're, you're interested in the riding side, uh, you know, we'll, we'll look at the um, pushing your your riding forward uh, you know, helping you support jumping if that's what you're interested in uh, helping you lunging and but likewise with the animal care side you might have um, a phobia for example of of handling tarantulas or snakes uh, and and the team are here they're, they're very well versed at uh, supporting students to, to overcome those, those fears um, and challenge yourself uh, and to, to build up those skills uh, and hands up I was one of those people that was petrified of touching tarantulas but I can now touch a tarantula so uh, yeah the, the success does happen. Um, our ways of working are a really big uh, part of how we, we work here at the college. Uh, and these are a set of guidelines, set of principles that, that both our, our staff and our, our students uh, work towards. Uh, so being open in, and informative, for example, respectful and fair. Uh, and you know, if we're all working towards uh, these, these guiding principles, uh, then we actually really create uh, a nice uh, working environment, uh, one where everyone um, can really feel that they can achieve their, their potential. Uh, and these are, are very much integrated into our day-to-day our, our -day life at, at the college. Uh, and, and we always refer back to these. So um, they do get you, you ready for work. They do create that nice environment. And actually having come from industry, um, you know, I can really see how, how they do work and support and, and, uh, and give our students that, that best opportunity to succeed. So why animal and equine? Well, actually, when we look at it as uh, an industry, uh, they are actually really, really big industries. Uh, we look at the animal care industry uh, as a whole, uh, that it's worth over a billion pounds to the UK economy. And yeah, it kind of makes sense when we think about what animal care involves, that it's not just um, kind of having our, our pets and, uh, and, and, and retail, but all the, the supporting industries that work around that from your, your doggy daycare to your dog walking, uh, to your, your vets, you know, we need, we need more vets, we need vet nurses, 
Uh, but also then looking at the, the welfare charities that, that rescue uh, and rehome uh, pets, but also from the wildlife front as well. You know, zoos and, and wildlife parks, uh, you know, there, there is a big conservation element behind those. Uh, and again, all the, the supporting aspects that, that work with those, you know, from feed suppliers to, um, to, to providing, uh, let's say, your, your veterinary care, your nutritional advice, um, your physio. Uh, there, there's lots that's in connected with, with, our, with our animal care industry. Um, so it's a huge industry and, and there may be aspects of it that you've not really considered before. Um, that, that do connect um, with with, um, with animal, um, so it could be that actually you're you're really interested in in research um, and and looking at what's going out in the in the wild and and um, you know, our, our planet's forever changing um, with, with climate change etc. And yeah, animal care can can be a um, a starting point for that uh, as we we look into our wildlife and conservation pathways. So uh, lots um, yeah lots to to consider to to think about animal studies. But then likewise, when we think about uh, the uh, equine industry, we look at the, the rural sector um, past agriculture, the equine industry is, is the, the second largest rural economy. Uh, and you know, there's plenty of different roles within um, the, the equestrian side everything from potentially uh, you might want to, to manage your own yard, you know, similar to what we have here at the college. Uh, you might be really interested in um, actually being a rider yourself and being involved in the, those com uh, competitions, your dressage, your show jumping, your cross country. Uh, and there's opportunities to work, say on your, your riding marshal here at college. Uh, maybe you want to, to run those events or again, looking at the supporting industries uh, and thinking about um, being a, a saddler who actually makes the, the saddles and the bridles to to being a farrier, saddle fitter, uh, again, looking at the, the nutritional elements, physio, um, again, equine specialist, uh, vets and vet nurses. So um, huge potential uh, within these industries that um, our um, courses can be the, those stepping points, that, that starting point um, before you um, move on to, for the rest of your career. I'll just jump in there, Chris, while you're going on to the next slide, because we've got a couple of new people arrived just to say that the um, question and answer is open at the bottom of your screen. So if you've got any questions that you'd like to us to answer, um, do pop them in there. They only come through to, to us. So don't worry about your spelling. Don't worry if it's a silly question. I won't name you or anything. So do put anything that, you're, that you want to know in there and we'll cover it off at the end. Thank you. Lovely, thank you. Um, so just popping on to um, our next slide there, key features of, uh, about college experience. Uh, so with our, our courses, they, they are, are not just looking at uh, the, the academic element. Uh, there, there's plenty that you'll, you'll be studying um, from a theory perspective, uh, but also you know, the understanding there is a practical element uh, behind those. Uh, so if you're studying animal care, uh, you'd be looking at everything from um, nutrition to behavior to anatomy and physiology. There's quite a lot of science involved in both our, our, our animal and, and equestrian um, qualifications. Uh, but moving on for, from those, the, you could be in our animal care center, uh, looking at doing health checks and how to handle you know, a rabbit correctly to, to how to handle an alpaca and take them out for, for a walk and how you'd assess their body condition. Uh, you might need to do some behavioral training um, and our alpacas are certainly something um, that we work with uh, on that and um, how to create um, positive experiences with them. Uh, you could have a lesson where you're looking at exercising um, the, our alpacas and goats uh, and your session could be walking around campus um, with, with a goat in tow uh, and, and looking at how um, you uh, work uh, in enforcing their behaviours and giving them those, those exercise experience. Now, let's say obviously from um, an equestrian perspective, you know, plenty of riding, plenty of jumping uh, and, and lunging, grooming, stable management, etc. So loads of, of practical opportunities. Um, but also with our courses uh, doing uh, work experience as well. Uh, so all our courses there, there are set hours depending on the course uh, that you look into, uh, where you'd be going out and getting those placements uh, within industry. So not only are you getting the, the academic experience, the practical experience, but actually you're getting a, an idea of, of how um, you're expected to, to work in industry. And, and of course, this all contributes to, to forming um, the, the, this full package where you should be ready to, to step into um, your, your career afterwards. 
Uh, we do have different pathways, so it, it's not a case of just being, you know, animal care and you know, and just sticking to that. So, for example, in our, our level three um, technical and animal care, uh, in your second year, you could uh, look at specialising in science if you're interested in the research element or maybe being a, a vet nurse uh, or, or looking into to working in um, a, a lab facility. Uh, so um, with with that science aspect that starts working towards giving you the 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 training and the skills to go on to university if that's a, a route you want to go on to to look at uh, your, your vet nursing and your veterinary um, schools uh, we have our wildlife pathway so if you're interested in um, being out and about um, in the field working for maybe RSPB, uh, Natural England, uh, Wildlife Trust, uh, that starts looking at surveying skills, uh, it, it looks at how to identify you know, different birds, different trees, different plants, uh, and really sort of sets you up with, with those skills for a career in wildlife. Um, zoo pathway, so again if you want to, to become a, a zookeeper or, or a zoologist where you're, you're studying um, animal behaviour uh, and, and, um, and, and looking at the, the actual animal interaction and the animals as, as in the, themselves, uh, you know, opportunities to actually study how um, zoology works. Uh, or if you want to be working in a public aquarium, uh, that would be the, the route to take. And then uh, we've got our, our animal management pathway, which is more looking at the, the pet industry and, and kennels and catteries uh, and looking at um, how you might run a pet shop. Uh, if, if that's what you're interested in, maybe you want to have your own, maybe you want to, to run a, 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 a dog walking business or um, doggy daycare and you've got in there um, elements on, on how to, to manage the, those businesses. Whereas on our equine side, uh, you could be doing the non-riding where you're focusing on uh, working as a, a groom or a yard manager. Uh, you could then move on to, to being a, a flat rider. So, so where you're, you're not basically doing the, the jumping side, um, but you're working more from a, a dressage perspective. Or you could be looking at uh, the jump pathway where, where there is a bit more focus on, on, on jumping. So quite a, a few pathways to, to focus on, depending on your interest, depending on where you want to go uh, in a career uh, perspective. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, um, we've got our animal care centre, we've got our equine yard, uh, and they, they're all part of, of, those, uh, of those sessions. Okay, so progression. Uh, and you know, this is looking at once you've got your... Um, your particular qualification, what's the next steps, where, where do you want to go afterwards? Um, and typically we, we do a, a range of courses, our level one, two, and three. For those who, who go on to our uh, level one and level two courses, normally your progression route is aiming for the for the course above. Uh, so if you're, you're doing a level one, you'd then be aiming to do um, the level two afterwards. And likewise, if you're doing the level two, you'd be aiming for the level three. Uh, for those who are doing our level three technicals, there is the opportunity to go straight into industry uh, with um, these courses, depending on what experience you, you have. Uh, or we have also quite a lot of students that move on to either apprenticeships or, or university as well. Uh, and with the, the level three technical qualifications, uh, you, you'd be able to, to, to go through that university route. Okay, so I've mentioned about our different courses, about our different levels. Uh, so um, pretty much they, they say they, they run um, sequentially. So we've got our, our, our level one diploma uh, in animal and likewise we've got that with our level one uh, diploma in equine. Uh, and this is all de uh, depending on what GCSEs you, you, you have uh, and, and what grades um, we can pop you in and match up the entry requirements that we have on, on our website. Uh, so level two then moves into our technical qualification uh, and, and what you'll see within actually our animal management uh, area is we've got two different level three qualifications. And, and what we generally recommend if you're, you're doing a direct um, entry from your GCSEs that you go on to the level three technical, uh, whereas if you go on to, to the level two technical, a progression route there is then to do our level three work-based diploma. Um, so slight difference there, technical is a lot more science-based and the diploma is, is a, a lot more work-based uh, as it says there uh, in, the, in the name. Uh, our equine is just a standard level one, level two, level three.
Okay, so if you are interested in, in uh, applying for um, a space with us at the college, um, you, you've had a look at the website, you, you've had a chance to, to um, listen to this talk, uh, and you've answered all the questions you think Eastern is the place for you. Uh, what next? Where, where do you go from there? Uh, we are now um, taking on applications for the next academic year. So as you can see there from the, the, the pitch ground we've got on there, now is the time to start um, applying via the website. Uh, we are starting to do interviews as well. Uh, so once we've got your application through, we will go through an interview process uh, just to make sure that um, that you've got uh, um, a good understanding of what the, the course is all about. Uh, and yeah, as long as we're happy you meet those entry requirements, uh, then we can look at giving you an offer. Um, Equine obviously has the additional element uh, that uh, you could be looking at doing a riding assessment uh, as well. If that's uh, if you're looking at going directly onto to the riding pathway, uh, so we'd assess your writing ability as part of that selection process. Uh, and then you get an offer and then hopefully you'll accept that offer. And then we, we look at uh, seeing you in kind of the, the August period uh, where we go through our enrollment. Uh, as it does say on there, uh, you know, it is worth having a, a plan B in place at all times. Yeah, we, we certainly do uh, encourage all applications, but we are also a very popular department. Um, so the, the quicker you, you, know, you get your application in, the, the, the quicker we can start um, that process um, and, and help you get onto um, a course with us here at Eastern. So that's me. Uh, that's a, an overview of our, of our animal and equine. Um, so over to um, questions and answers. Yep, thank you very much, Chris. That was really helpful. And we've got some questions come in, but um, if you're on the call and you've got other questions, do, do pop them um, into the Q&A at the bottom. Um, I'll take the first couple because they do relate to what you've just touched on, um, Chris, which is about the process up until now. One was around how do you apply? Um, because my school says that I need to use help you choose. Um, two ways to apply, either directly via the via our college website, and that's fine. But if your school is one, and there are several that do heavily promote the use of help you choose, and it helps them to monitor um, that all of their year 11s are getting offers, then do use help you choose as well. They all come into the college in the same way. So it really doesn't matter. But as I say, if your school says help you choose, then do use that. Um, there was also a question about finding out more general information about the college. And if you go onto the, the website where the link was for this um, Zoom session, there is a recorded session on general information about the college. So you can have a look at that. And the other one, which I was expecting, we've spoken about lots of things, the Animal Centre, we've Chris has spoken about the indoor arena, etc. And I know that you're going to want to see it. We want to put on face-to-face -face open days as soon as we can. Um, the next two that we have planned is um, one in February and one in July. I very much hope we can run the February one, um, but again, keep your, keep your eye on the website. If we can't, I would be almost sure that by the time we get to July, we'll be back to face-to-face -face and you can come and see the, um, the fantastic facilities because they really are something quite, quite special. Um, we've then got some questions, Chris and Paula, about sort of getting onto the courses. What happens if I don't get a grade four in English and maths? Do you want me to take this one, Chris? I think certainly really depending on the courses that you apply for. But for all of our courses, if you know, if 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 there are you don't quite reach your English and maths. Um, they are really, really important for moving into industry, for moving into employment. They are absolutely, you know, the highest grade that you can possibly get is 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 really important so we do especially at level one and level two um, we put on English and math sessions as part of your program of study so your program of study includes your vocational pathway so the vocational side whether that's animal or equine it includes tutorials um, but it also includes maths and or English some students need to take both some need students to get that grade four only need to take one um, but we will incorporate that into your um, timetable quite often for the level three qualifications it's essential that you have those coming into the qualification so if you've applied for a level three and when you get your results you haven't quite met the grades that 
you were hoping for, then we would look and see if we can get you on to one of the more appropriate courses at level two um, or at level one um, and incorporate those maths and English because, you know, within this industry, within the animal, within the equine industry, it's really, really important that you have those maths and English skills. Thank you. Um, then we've got a couple of equine ones. Do I have to be able to ride at a certain level if I want to do the equine course? Yeah, so again, that uh, similar to, to kind of with it with the, the maths and English, that actually that that will have uh, an impact on uh, the level that that you work towards. So, uh, which is why we do the the riding assessments, uh, and and it does very much uh, impact the the sort of pathways that you're aiming for as well. Um, so. Uh, Really, if you're looking to go on to, to level three, uh, then actually having you know, a good level of riding, uh, say a, a novice level of riding, um, so I you can you know walk, trot, and canter uh, is is um, a a need on there. But of course, we would help support, develop, it and improve those skills. Uh, if you've not sat on a horse before or only can just walk, uh, then we'd be looking uh, towards the, those low, the level two um, to help support and develop you there. Yeah, we're not looking at badminton or burley or, or no. pre St. George, shall we? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, and I think you mentioned interview earlier, Chris, which might have, have worried a couple of people. And I've just got, what sort of questions will I be asked to interview? Mm, yeah. Um, so they are, yeah, one thing I always say when I'm starting to the interview process is, um, it's it's a discussion. It, it's to, to find out a bit about um, you, yourself, um, but also an opportunity for you to find out a bit about the college and about the course. Um, so there are questions, um, but it's more kind of um, you know, why is it do you want to study um, with, with the department? Um, telling us about you, your experiences, um, and just trying to find that actually it is the right course for you, um, and knowing kind of what you want to do as a career, um, what your interests are. That really just that, that helps us pop you in, in the right place so um, there are questions uh, but it, it's nothing there to, to trick you um, you know or, or to, to tie you up it, it's more about us just getting an idea about you what experiences you've got um, and, and popping you in the right place. Yeah, I mean, going back to our mission statement, the final bit is about securing futures and we want to make sure that we've got you on the course that will get you to where you want to go. So that's what the, the interview is about, as Chris said. Um, OK, well, we're now on to sort of a series of questions So we've, we've been interviewed and we're, we're on the course. Um, how many days a week will I will I be at college? Cool. So, and that's that's a little bit dependent on the course that you are. Our level threes are typically uh, on site a bit more than our, our level twos. Uh, but you could be also depending if you're doing your maths and English as well. Uh, it'd be anywhere from from three to four four days. Uh, and uh, you've you kind of have your sort of core of three days with your uh, vocational uh, course. And then uh, if you've got maths and English, that would be tied into that timetable. Um, but we do integrate into to that timetable what we call um, your, your industry day. Uh, so although you'd be uh, on, on campus, maybe three or four days, uh, what we are tying into that is an opportunity for you to go out and do your work experience. So we're, we're in effect. Um, if you want to, to kind of look at it, um, it, it is a five days, but it's not five days here at college. Uh, it, it's five days when you include that, that time going out to do your work experience as well. Yeah, so it's very different from the five days at, at school for certain yeah. times. Yeah. And, and what might a typical day look like? Am I going to be in the yard all day? Well, um, so if you, uh, the way we, we set up with uh, a question uh, that you do have a practical day. Uh, so uh, a typical day uh, on your, your practical day would be going in doing your yard duties. So that is doing your turnouts, doing your mucking out. Uh, and you know, mucking out is one of those things that you know, we, we have to do every day as horse owners. And it is a bit laborious when you've done it every time, yeah, every week and, and keep doing it. You've probably got horses at home and you're used to mucking out. Um, um, but obviously we need to look after our, our horses. So, um, so it's doing the, those general duties to start off with. Uh, and then you start tying in um, your, um, your, your riding elements if you're doing that. So do it, doing your, your flat work, your jump work. Um, everyone will do a bit of lunging. So there'll be that element in there. Um, but also um, 
tying in your what we call your stable operations um, your um, presenting your horses so how to, to groom them and, and to how to do your platting etc and um, how to get your tack ready um, so all of those elements are tied into into your practical day and then you've you've got then um, your two days where, where you'll be doing your, your theory work as well but theory doesn't all mean you know we're, we're sitting in um, you know, a classroom listening to um, you know a lecture go on a, a theory session can be let's do a bit about talk about um yeah saddles and then let's get some saddles out uh, and then yeah let, let's have a look at them and, and and discuss them together in groups so um we use theory but you know it, it's uh, yeah they're, they're nice uh, interactive sessions as well and, it, and it's a similar type aspect for, for animal care as well so you'll, you'll have those practical elements tied into into that um, but i think the, the key thing is with with animal and equine you are dealing with animals so i'd like say no day is typical because you never know what happens with an animal <laughs> And then you just mentioned the level three in animal management, Chris, and I've got a question. Can I go on to university from the level three course? Yeah, definitely. So as long as um, it, so level three is, is kind of tied over two years. So um, you could finish with us over the first year um, and you come out with a technical diploma. Um, but if you're wanting to, to go on to, um, on to do your, your um, university you need to have achieved the, the extended technical um, diploma uh, and so you've then got enough of your UCAS points um, to go to university uh, and, and really when you're looking at those those pathways to in your second year really having a good focus on, on what you want to achieve at, at university what career you want to go on to because um, if you want to be a vet nurse you need to be focusing on that science pathway um, and then yeah you can then go on to university from there. Which goes back, doesn't it, to what we were saying at the beginning, it's really important that we know what, what you want to do mm. when you leave the college to make sure you're on the right programme when, when you're with us. Definitely. I've just got one more question. So if anybody else has got any more, pop them into the into the Q&A now. Um, and this one is not an unusual one for Eastern, actually, because it's about the transport, um, because we know that it might seem quite difficult as to how you're going to get to the college and is there a bus service and everything from the city centre. I mean, Eastern is actually very well served for transport because we have to set it up because we, you know, we know that not many of you will be able to drive when you first come to us, so we need to do that. So there are lots of different transport options, both directly from outlying villages, but then also into Norwich and back out again to Eastern including a minibus where we'll pick you up from the bus stop and, and take you down to the college. Um, we do have a dedicated transport officer. So again, if you go onto the into the website and, and look for that, you'll be able to um, see the details there. Um, or if you go onto the website, we have a live chat function and you can ask the question there um, during nine to five, I think, and they will they will answer your questions for you. But in the main, surprisingly good transport links when you consider it's a rural land based college. But obviously, that's something that we've had to do. One last one popping up. How many people will I be in a class with? OK, yeah. So on average, what we look at is uh, about 18. Um, in, in your, your theory sessions. Practical is a bit smaller, um, probably just because the space we have in, in the animal care centre. But yeah, 18 is your average. That's lovely, thank you. So that's answered all of the questions. Thank you very much, everyone. If you do have any more, do use the live chat function. Um, do come and see us when we manage to run our face-to-face -face open days and see the fantastic facilities um, Chris has told you all about. Um, Find out as much information as you can about the courses that you want to do. Make sure you're really, really well informed, not just about the course, but about where it can take you. Don't forget to have a plan B. Um, when you open that, that envelope, it might say that you've done a lot better than you hoped. It might say that you did what you hoped, but you've changed your mind. Or it might say you've not done quite as well. And so you do need to have all of those scenarios sorted. Um, so do that. Work really, really hard for your exams and I look forward to you enrolling with us at Eastern College in September 22. Thank you very much, everyone.